All right, so in this video, I'm going to be uh, showing you guys about some of the features in Maya for UV laying out repeated items. Now, in this case, right, I've uh, more or less done the uh, UV layout for my scooter over here. So you can see that the texture space, right, is applied evenly for all the objects. Now, one of the benefits about Maya's UV layout is that you can select an individual or several objects and then going over to UV shell mode and then do the layout together. So what this means is that I can I can select all the objects, do the UV layout and you will just use a single UV space. So this will be very helpful when you bring it into other programs like uh, Substance Painter and you'll be able to just paint one single uh, UV layout. But uh, in any case, right, we'll still be able, we still need to actually combine all these mesh objects together if you want to like paint all the textures into a single UV layout like this. Now there'll be also instances, right, when you're doing UV layout, for example, for uh, some of you who are doing the Simon one, that you are doing uh, object with a lot of repetitive uh, items. Like for example, this bicycle over here. Now if you take a look at the bicycle, right, the repetitive items would be like this chain link. There are multiple chains. Uh, this chain link is just a very simple object. If you click, uh, I'm gonna click on one of the chain link. They have been linked together already. You will notice that the uh, it is made out of this uh, number eight like shape, and you can see over here in my UV layout, I already stacked them together, uh, all together because all these entire UV uh, the UV layout for all these items are essentially identical. So how do I get them to actually stack together? Which is what I'm going to show you using some of the tools available in uh, Maya. So let me just start from afresh. And I'm going to bring in a model which I've uh, done in, in Blender. So I already exported this into FBX, so I'm going to bring this in. Now before you actually do your UV layout, okay, one of the first important things is to check that your, the scale of all your objects right, have been frozen. And in this case, you can see that all the objects right, that are brought in has different scales. So this is not a no, this is not a good thing, and especially if we have uneven scale for the different axes, this will cause uh, UV projection distortions. So what you can do is to select all the objects and then run them through a freeze transformation and reset all the objects to a scale of one one one. So later when you do your UV layout and uh, unfolding and uh, especially the unfolding, the uh, you will unfold properly. Okay, so but let's focus our attention on this uh, particular chain over here. So when I select the chain, and right now you notice there's no UV assignment to this chain. So I'm going to select the chain and then go over in a three-quarter view, change my view in three-quarter view, because I'm going to use the UV planar projection in camera mode. Okay, Or you can actually use camera-based uh, projection, but I like to use planar and then enable keep image with height ratio in its option box. And then under camera projection, and then hit project and you will see uh, identical shape of the chain appearing in the UV texture editor. And uh, the good thing about this chain is that it's already a separate object. If you go into shell mode, you can see that it is made up of all these multiple shells already. So what I'm going to do right now is that I'm going to select all the shells. Then I'm going to do a unfold operation. So shift right mouse click, unfold, unfold. And all the shells are going to unfold nicely. So now, now that my shells have unfolded, you notice that they are all essentially the same elements. They are made up the, of the same, uh, this number eight uh, mesh shape. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to run an orientation. So I'm going to select all the shells again in shell selection mode, UV shell. Then hold on the shift right mouse click and then run the orient shells. So what orient shells does is that it will orient the shells right in either the horizontal or the vertical mode. Okay, so you don't have to manually go and rotate them. This is a very useful tool. Next thing I want to do is I want to stack all of them together. Now, if all the shells are of similar shape, it will stack together quite efficiently, but there are ever so slight differences between each of these shells. So with the shells still selected, I'm going to hold down the shift right mouse click, and then I'm going to click on this thing called stack similar shells first. Okay, so this is going to take a while. What's going on right now is that the Maya UV uh, editor is going through all the shells and then it's trying to match which shell looks uh, similar to one another. 
Then once it's analyzed the shells, it will start to stack them together. You stack the closest shaped shells together. Okay, now it is stacking them together. Okay, so the analysis portion usually takes some time, so don't worry if the Maya seems to have paused. Okay, right now you can see that it managed to stack most of the similar uh, shells together. And if you click on one of the shell and move, you can see that it is stacked together. All right, so what I'm going to do, right, another operation is to orient and stack. Okay, use another operation called orient and stack. So shift right mouse click, make sure you select all the shells and then stack and orient shells. Use this one, stack and orient shells. And what it's going to do is that it's going to stack all the selected shells together. And also at the same time, uh, do a little bit of uh, orientation adjustment. And we should end up with either a stack of vertical oriented shells or the horizontal oriented shells. Now remember, you have to select these shells by dragging a box over them so that all of them will be selected. And if I want to stack this one, horizontal or rather the vertical oriented shells over the, um, the vertical oriented shells over the horizontal shells, I just need to drag a box over the shells, press E to rotate, and then just rotate 90 degrees. Okay, I'm manually rotating here. Then uh, press W and then just move it over and then this is what I've done. I manually stacked all these shelves. Then if I want, I can then just drag and then move these shelves to a side. And then I can carry on, uh, do my UV layout for all the other parts. Now for doing a bicycle, another part that will be requiring uh, the similar treatment, right, will be like this bicycle wheel and then these uh, wires, okay, the supporting spokes, right. So you can select all the spokes and then you can also do the same thing so that all the spokes, right, will only take only make use of a very tiny amount of UV space. All right, so using these principles, right, this is what I've applied to my scooter over here. And in my scooter's example, right, I have the uh, logo, the logo over here, right, that is uh, spread all over the place. And uh, what I did was, okay, I didn't really use any stacking for this one, but what I did for this is I do a UV layout for just the logo only, because if you don't um, and then I put it aside. So initially it was, I did, I select the logo and then I do a UV layer, I scaled it down and then I put it aside. Then I select every, every other object in object mode, every other object, then I run my uh, UV shell selection. I go and lay out all the UV shells first. Then I'm going to look for empty space, right? To essentially put my logo right in the empty space. And then once I repositioned it, I can manually go and select each of the shell that forms the logo and then I can manually rearrange them again. All right. The reason is I just want to keep the logo close to one another. So if I am a little bit more nitpicky, right, I will also reorient the letters right until they uh, spell the, the, the logo itself. Like for example, I'm going to put the letter O right over here. And then I think I still have a letter I, which is rotated wrongly. Okay, so this is just ad uh, just additional work just to make sure that I recognize that, ah, okay, this is the logo over here. Okay, also very careful to make sure that there's a gap between each of these shells. So imagine if you were to do this manually, which was what was done in the past, all right? This was done previously pretty much uh, manually. Now you can do like things like orient and all that pretty much automatically, okay, which is, which really helps you a lot. The UV tools, right, in Maya is probably one of the best out there, the default UV tools. Okay, so you can, you can see that. Let me just show you another example. Let's say, for example, let me go back to object mode here. Now some of the parts like this piston over here, this uh, shock absorber, you can see that the parts are spread all over the place. Now let's say, for example, I just want to keep all these parts together because I know, want to know where they are. So what I can do is I can grab these shells. I can grab these shells, all right, and I can put them aside. And then I can manually just put them close to one another so that I know that these, are, these parts are actually related to each other. And you can see the UV layout that I did. Or another way that it, you can do is to select all of them and then do another layout operation you will occupy all this UV space and then you have to remember to scale it down 
back to its original space again. And otherwise, right, you will use up a lot of the UV space. So now we can have all the objects close to one another. Okay, I'm gonna just spread them out a little bit so that they have enough space in between them. Then now I can go and select everything in object mode. Then I have to switch back to shell selection mode. And now I have to go and find, okay, where is a spot which I can put these, uh, these objects. I can, I can see there's uh, another empty space around here. So what I can do is I can grab these shells and then move it over here. And I might need to push some of the other shells aside so that to make more space for my piston, which has which now been moved much closer to one another. So that for this, right, you have to do a little bit of manual work already. Okay, reason why uh, sometimes you might have to do that is, let's say you're not using Substance Painter. Okay, you're using uh, only Photoshop to do your texturing. And then that is a that is, uh, reason why you might want to do this. Okay, so this one, I probably have to put it somewhere further, maybe here. Okay, so now I have place all the related parts close closer to me. So in the old days, right, this is how UV layout would have been done. Like all the related parts would be closer to one another. Uh, and then you, when you do your Photoshop texturing, right, then uh, everything will be nearby. But right now with Substance Painter, it's really not much of an issue because when you are in Substance Painter, you'll be doing your texturing in 3D and then literally painting the textures right on the 3D object itself. And as, as long as your UV layout is done properly like this, whatever colors that you paint will appear in this layout. Okay, so hopefully you will understand this concept. And uh, with that, I will end the video.